Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Talk About the 803. Today, guys, I am here with my longtime friend. Oh my God, Calvin, Gerald, how are you? You know, I'm just out here, you know, living. You just here? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep my crown in my mouth. That's why they got the light. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. We just here. We just gonna chat. We just gonna chat it up. I, I don't yeah. know, but but this is just like you couldn't even write this one down. We just gonna chat it out. I'm trying to get this mic right because all right, listen. Okay, there we go. It looks great. Okay. Yeah, everything's really good. I mean, it's been a long time. How are you? I'm good, and it has been a long time. Like a long time, long long time. <laughs> when the last time what did I see you? I think the last time we saw each other at my grandmother's house. And I remember you had on this Burmese velvet jacket. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, I think okay. that was the last yeah. And somebody, there was a baby. I was holding a baby. Was it my baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be, right? <laughs> so it had to be my daughter at the time. It had to be. I don't know. Oh, this one right here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it has been forever. So, Calvin, what's up? What, what what you got going on? I mean, other than being out here in Houston, surviving hurricanes and shit like that, I mean, it's good. But what I'm doing now is, um, I don't know. Uh, like, after my mom died, like, I moved out. I talked to you, like, last year, right before I moved to Houston. Right. Uh, so I moved to Houston. Um, and you know how you have your own shit going, and God be like, Nah, motherfucker. This <laughs> right. This is what I'm gonna do. You be like, oh my gosh, like right. okay, right. I'm gonna just go with your plan. So, right. what I I moved out here to do my own thing, right? So mainly, like I wanted to restart my business, uh, go in this whole other direction. None of that shit worked out. Right. Um, I started working for another firm. And at the same time, doing some research around like cybersecurity, I opened a dog business. Um, so mainly working on that, I'm um, getting back to myself. This is the first time in a long time I've been on my own. And you know how you always with somebody or somebody floating around. Right. So this is the, I think, yeah, this is the first time I've been on my own, like in a year. So it's been like a year period of time. So okay. it's been just like getting to know me. Like, what do I want out of life? Absolutely. I'm 45. What the hell is going on with that? Okay. So it's like moving into this new phase. Um, and then like some <clears throat> realizations, right? Because a lot of a lot of people that has been with me on this journey since I left home, like 2006, like they've died. You get what I'm saying? Um, and you know how we'll talk about that later, but yeah, so they're gone. Like they've moved on. A lot of people I just don't have contact with anymore. So it's just, I don't know. I'm just walking through this period of lot, like isolation. And I know right. people are like, oh, mm -hmm. you're isolated because you want to be isolated. But no, I, this is like a divine mandated isolation. Right. I get it. Yes. And while I've been in this isolation, separated from things that's familiar, separated from habits, you get what I'm saying? Like, Yes. all types of things that's familiar yeah. uh with me it's just it's just been like a learning and growing experience right, right. and as you see one of my fucking dogs in the background i see the dog <laughs> they, they just don't beat themselves right how about yeah. you like what's been going on ah uh, life you know life is life and it life is life and, right? you know what i'm saying <laughs> i can't say no other way i mean it's just life <laughs> I have three beautiful children. Of course, I have a son who is has autism. He was um, diagnosed with autism back in 2000, I want to say 17. Okay. So, you know, just, you know, working with him and getting the kids to work with him as well. It's just, you know, I'm here. I'm here. And working on other businesses. So, yeah, I'm here. Hopefully, singing is, is in that, right? Because <sighs> Calvin, I knew you was going to do that. I you know, singing is my passion. I love singing, but I think it is your soul and your gift and your divine and, purpose. And it probably is. And I just put it. I, mean, I can't even sing a song. 
in the shower or in the bathroom without crying. Like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? There's nothing uh -huh. wrong with you. And I think we need to get to a point where we accept the fact that crying is part of the healing process because you're just getting things out that you probably can't express verbally, right? And Absolutely. there's nothing wrong with, with those emotions. Right, right. But I wonder, I just want to... I just want to get it out. I want to sing. You know, if I'm crying in the shower, what makes you think I can sing in front of a whole bunch of people? Because <laughs> the people in, because the people you sing into in the crowd is probably dealing with the same thing that you're dealing with, and you expressing that is going to help them heal, or you know, even kind of actualize what's going on with them. So you never know. That's true. Well, I'm gonna let God. Give not only makes room for you, but it also make rooms for others, right? That's like, true. You no, know, absolutely. And, you know. We were both raised in the church, even though we're kind of like sometimes fall away from the church. Right, right exactly. Yeah. You, a, a part of our life is, right? Like we used to say this a lot at uh, my church in uh, Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, at New Psalmist is our, I'm gonna paraphrase this shit, but it's our goal is to make life better for somebody else. Right. So us walking, um, who said this? What's the girl that's always Lauren Hill was saying this on a thing I looked at today. She was like, a lot of people are always like, I want to be a vessel for God. I want to be a vessel for God. And a lot of people, they think being a vessel for God is always being in the spotlight. But no, it's some of the shitty things that we go through, like being arrested, you know, yes. you know, living with an illness that, you know, people condemn, right? Like, you right. know, being, you know, going through debt and you know, overcoming dead or, you know, being in certain types of relationships, right? So sometimes the path of God is like taking that, that grimy path and then using your voice or using a company or whatever, you know, to bring other people to God or let them know that God is, you know, he's alive and well. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I love so you that. should You should consider that. Think about that. I'm trying. And I sing around the house, but that's that's all you're going to get from me. Or if I go somewhere and I'm just singing and supporting people. That's basically all you're going to get from me. Now, I am working on, uh, I don't know what they call it now, a jingle or whatever for my talk. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah. So I've been working what on that. Doing? What are you thinking about doing? Oh, man. I have it already. I have the beat. Shout out to my homeboy, Omar Edwards. He gave me the beat to the song. So right. I've been, you know, working on it. But it's like, I got to find that. I don't know. I just got to get into it and find that, 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 that niche. Find the right thing to do with it. I don't know. There's like, no time right now. Mm. And I just posted something like that. I just said, it's now or never. It's now or never. And people dropping like motherfucking flies out here. So you better just I you know, know. take advantage of that. Yeah, you really have to. I, I'm taking it all in. I'm taking it all in. It is. It's, it's life, though. <laughs> some days I feel depressed and some days I feel like giving up but I know I can't give up you know but it's just I don't know the the, the thing keep coming to my head life just be life and, you know and well God keep waking you up so uh, like what Elijah Muhammad said it and then Nuri Muhammad said it and T.D. Jakes always said that if you wake up there's more to it right so right. if he was you wouldn't be alive Which is we wouldn't be sitting here talking so he woke you up for that, you know, that yeah. purpose. That's absolutely true. That's true. That's All true. things work together, you know. For Nothing the good. is ever a mistake. Never. Everything I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't get me excited. Don't start getting me excited. <laughs> but it's true. All things it is, yeah. It's just like, oh, my God. Doors just keep me, open. Me and, um, oh, I hope she don't kill me for saying her name, but. Me and Denise was talking today, right? And, you know, we always, like, since never talked in high school, right? Like, more than, hey, what's going on? Or, I right. noticed since around the way. Mm -hmm. But we both moved to the Northeast, right? And we mm -hmm. were talking today. And you're like, who the fuck would have thought <laughs> that, you know, people, you don't realize, like, me knowing you, me knowing, like, by good friend, best friend Marcy, right? Like uh -huh. at this age in life, like 40 something years old, you start to realize why you were, God put you behind that person in that class, right? And you right. kept in contact with that person and you never fell out of orbit. Or even if you fell out of like, 
close proximity, you are always, you know, in contact with them, like a text or uh, right. like a little call or whatever like that. So now and then this age, we're kind of actualizing the purpose that everybody is kind of over and back together, like mm -hmm. me and you, right? And right, right. You tend to find out like, we might as well just rip the bandaid off. Oh, we, we grew up in the same household because a lot of people think that, oh, Calvin, you know, you grew up in this. It was da da da. And I'm like, right. fuck no. Like, it was crazy growing up in my house, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. crazy growing up, you know. Well, I wouldn't say in my house growing up as me. Let me just put that in perspective, right? Right. So I think um, now as we get older, we're realizing not only were we just it's more than just a surface friendship, right? Because we met right. people through all walks of life. And now when we get on the phone, we're actually like getting some stuff off of our chest. And right. Like, you yeah. know, and getting off the phone call feeling a little bit lighter, right. you know, not more like way down than we right. used to. Does that make right. sense? It makes a lot of sense. I get it. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I think that's what was, that's what was going on with me. Like, uh, like before I saw you with the, I was I already married and shit. I think I was already married. Yeah, but before that, man, I'd have been arrested and all type of shit. You get what I'm saying? Like arrested, fall for bankruptcy. It was rough. It was rough out there in the streets, oh, right? You know what I'm saying? But then each 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 trial right like i don't know like even though i wasn't considered like um like saved or what like that i was always connected to god so he saw yes. me do like, a whole lot of shit that i was like doing intentionally and then mm -hmm. unintentionally like right right so um i don't know that's just what and then when i called you last year after that stuff happened with my mom i think that was the turning point of Oh, this is why you. These are why the people you have in your life or in your life. Right. If that makes sense. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Why you keep asking that? It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Life has led us down a road of, whew, of a lot. I don't know what to say. It just let us down a road of. Of things, a lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> it's gonna have to be a part two to this. But it has right. Uh, so let me ask you this, right? So you, what made you start this? Let's let's talk about it, right? In eight oh three, you've been you've been you've been trekking in Columbia for a long time. So eight oh three is significant, right? So absolutely, you know, from you know in Columbia you know, living in Columbia for so long and Columbia, South Carolina. And, you know, I noticed that a lot of friends would come to me or people would come to me and just randomly talk to me a lot. And I'm just like, okay. You know, and then I had one of my girlfriends who actually did my first episode. She had a book coming out. Right. And it's like, God just gave me this, this vision. And I was just like, huh? I don't even like to talk. I'm very shy. I don't like to talk. But I mean, I love listening to people. So right. when I you know, thought about it, I prayed about it, and I was like, okay, maybe this will be good, you know what I'm saying? So I do it for the people and for myself, you know, to build myself up a little bit as well, to get to know people, because with that, you know, it's just amazing to see how many people are out there writing books, entrepreneurship, yeah. music, mm -hmm. just different things. Right. Like, it, it's just amazing. <clears throat> so I wanted to be that platform for them to build you know you have your celebrities okay celebrities are doing what they do but what about the people who are trying to build from ground up and trying to you know that's in my face i want to help them so maybe this can help them you know reach yeah. out to people so this is why i started the show for people yeah. to tell their stories i think i think so too and i also when i when I see your episodes, right, I, I also see it as, like, a lot of people go to therapy, right, like, mm -hmm. traditional therapy, a lot of people, a lot of us go to church, and we stand up there, and we get the, you know, this on Sunday, but then I also look at it as a little bit of talk therapy, right, like, people, a lot of, sometimes people go in spaces, and they just want to get some stuff off their chest, right, and people are talking back, like, sometimes you just need to listen and let somebody else broadcast so i also look at your show as a little bit of talk therapy because people get to 
come in, connect, get off their right. chest. Right, right. You and just I ha you have the same type of spirit and energy I have where somebody can just come and say, hey, I did X, Y, Z, and we like, all right, okay, so what's next? Like, right. What do you do after that, right? Right, like, absolutely. You, you can't stay in it. No. You have to move past it. And what I always tell people, kind of like what I see you doing, if you ask for wisdom, God gonna give you shit that's gonna test your wisdom. Right. If you ask for strength, He gonna give you. But you yeah. shit that give you strength, and it might be you getting sick. It might be a loved one being sick. It might be you going through hard times for a season. But whatever you ask God for, people think it's just gonna be like, Bloop. right. Here you go. Right. A test to get to that. So when people come on your show, I, I see them doing that. Like it's a different. Like you're saying, we have the celebrities out there, but then I. I look and see you capture a different audience that might not have that platform, but they have the platform. Right. Here. And it's, it's also, we are helping each other build, you know, I'm hearing mm -hmm. this story and I'm listening and I'm just watching and it's things that they're yeah. teaching me on the show. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I love it. And I love the, the intimate part of it. I love being hands on. I really don't like the camera situation, but it is what it is at this point, you know, until yeah. I get to that point. Um, but it's just, it's awesome. I love the show. You know, I took a break for a while because, you know, um, depression did sit in for a while with certain situations. And but I had people calling me and reaching out to me saying, what's up with the show? What's up? Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't feel like it, you know, but that's selfish. That's selfish. So I had to get myself back together and be like, OK, people are reaching out to you. You need to go ahead and finish what, you know what you started so yeah yeah and it's okay to be selfish though right because you're a mom mm -hmm. i do you, it's a lot right it's a lot but then at the same time <clears throat> whatever you're putting out you gotta make sure you're putting back into you so even though you're doing the show like what are the tools that you're using to pour back into cynthia right like what right. are the tools that you know saying like how are you taking down time to even balance, you know, coming back on the show and even having a show, right? So, right. So right. we were taught this. Oh, selfish is bad. No, it's not. It's not a bad thing to be selfish. Right. Selfish. That I'm taking. I'm taking time to like heal. Go. You know. You don't have to do the Lauren Hill style now. Like, don't do that. <laughs> that <laughs> but it, it's good to take time to go inside and reflect and say, you know. How can I give more to myself? And even as you talk about depression, right? You mentioned that, like, what are the steps you're taking around that? Like, what is your support network? And how are you, what are you doing to bridge the gap there? And how are you, well, how are you handling it? I write, I write a lot. So I write things mm -hmm. down. I have a journal. I also right. just kind of um, shut down from everything and everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I pray about things, of course. Um, I just, I don't know. I just sit, I reflect, I just write. Everything is becomes, it comes with writing and prayer. That's my thing. Because yeah. if I didn't have prayer and I didn't have that writing, I don't know. And then I have a, a, a few friends that have been there because they could just feel it. And they like, you okay today? Uh, no, I'm not okay. And I, you know, I figured, you know, I used to tell people, yes, I'm okay, but I'm, I'm not okay. And I learned that it's yeah. okay not to be okay. And, you know, exactly. right. And so, you know, I stopped saying that I'm okay when I'm not okay. And, you know, so just having that support and just, you know, kind of staying to myself and, and just writing, yeah. it helped a lot, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Journaling is a, is a good thing, right? And then also in journaling, you know, you write in the vision, you're making it plain. I be here with it, yeah, right. Yeah. I, where when I look at you, I just I see a lot of you think or uh, there's some belief because of whatever highway road path you got to get here that you can't go and do this next thing, right? Or right. allow this vessel of a singer, you know, perfect your craft. And that's not the case, right? Like those things is going to help you move to the next level, right? right. Because there's another, there's a Cynthia somewhere, 
South Africa, Australia, whatever, different color, who knows? And they, they're waiting on not validation, but they're waiting for, what did Elijah Muhammad say? I was listening to him yesterday and he was like, no, that was Nuri Muhammad. Nuri Muhammad was like, he was at a, he was finishing up a conference or something like that. I might be paraphrasing incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And this gay dude handed him some money and was like, listen, I look up to you. You don't know that you're connecting with me. And he was like, if it wasn't for the money, he would have took all right because right. of the dude. But <laughs> and what he says from right. that was, right. you don't know who you're touching and impacting, right? Right. That's true. That's true. I don't know, you know, but I do get a lot of messages like, oh my goodness, you're amazing. But on this side, I'm like, ooh, child, if you only knew the struggle I had to go through to get here, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, well, God, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for that. Honestly, thank you for that. But it takes yeah. a lot. It, it, it takes a lot. And I'm appreciative for the people who stick in here with me, who has helped me build this show from ground up. Just, just everything. I'm, I'm but don't you think that's part of the, don't you think that's part of the oil though? Yeah, anyway. I remember the Christmas show at Timberland High School. You and Rashawn were singing, right? And Rashawn, he he sung good, and I forgot the name of the song. But when you sing, I'm like, God damn! Let me go down here in this auditorium and give my life. Right. Don't right? stop! <laughs> Don't stop! <laughs> so but that's what I'm saying. I right? was nervous though, but I was excited. Yeah. I was so excited right. to sing. You exactly. know? Oh my right. god. I can't even I that, think that's we I think mean, we're so programmed, right? Yeah. Be like, oh, it didn't come from I never watched these shows, but my brother used to watch this shit and all that. Like if it didn't come from Sunday's best or Bobby Joe or like the fucking whatever you call like the coding right. thing you guys used to Right. Do. If it if it wasn't birth then that it wasn't good, right? But man, come on. We're in a time where, if you look at where we're at now after the pandemic, right, going into the pandemic and after the pandemic, there's a void. There's a void that the regular mainstream cannot fill. So, like I'm saying, the oil and anointing you have is helping bridge that gap and bring people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, even if they weren't home, right, like in church, they're, they're seeking a home. They're seeking more. Like people are now in an environment, including me, right? They need more than just alcohol, weed, sex, and shopping, right? They're right. Like, they need they need undergirding, right? And so now that's what I'm saying, like you never know who you're like touching or who you're impacting, right? Just through Absolutely. Just, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There's somebody out there with an autistic son, right? And mm -hmm. who wants to sing, who wants to write, who wants to be in media, like what you're doing, and they see you doing it. Not saying that it's easy, right? Not saying right. that you're sitting here doing this, you know, numerous hours out the day, but you have a balance where you're able to prioritize your family and then prioritize your goals and dreams, which you're sitting right. here doing, right? So, right, right. I think, yeah. Why am I interviewing you? Like this is I don't beautiful. know. I don't know why. I'm gonna ask you to answer the show. Like, why are you interviewing me? <laughs> but this is good because you know I know this is good, yeah. People want to hear from me. It's like I'm the listener, you know. All I can do is just listen to you and then give you feedback on yeah. what you're talking about. But this is good where people can learn who Cynthia is, you know. So I love it. I love it. It's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I I've always known you to be a hustler from the Chinese restaurant days, right? And so do you remember? <laughs> Even if there were no customers in there, you were still at that counter. And I'm like, okay. Listen, I had to get those tips. And those people was not playing. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, though. I loved it. Oh, my God. It was so Where funny. the hell is that restaurant? I don't know. Is it still there? I heard. I don't know. Maybe somebody ran. No, it wasn't the same one that was in the the thing. I, have been, I, I haven't been home since my mom, before my mom died. So I don't. Like I remember the one you used to work at, but then there was that that one right by the barber shop. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Which I was like, I don't know how the hell that stayed open. I, did I say that on camera? <laughs> because it was a small town. It's a small town, so if you only have a variety of you know, uh, restaurants to go to, you're going to go. <laughs> 
So look, shout out to St. Stephen, South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, that's home right there forever. I always say more of the restaurant, not the town. The town is, you know. <laughs> look, shout out to St. Stephen. We got they was in St. Stephen, so we still got a shout it out though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It took us a minute to get here. Of course, you know we're gonna have to do a part two. And yeah, this is just a warm up. Yes, but I'm grateful for you. You know, you've been pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Like, what is wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. I don't like the way you talk to me, Calvin. Who, me? <laughs> I'm just pushing. But that's how I am at work, though. My, not, you know, I'm like that at work. I'm like that. My mom, before she died, she would be like, Calvin, you're so rough. And I'm like, Mom, nothing in my fucking life has been easy. I'm like, when I got arrested, they ain't brought no fucking balloons around the corner. They was like, yo, nigga, put them shoes on and let's go down to Baltimore, right? Wow, crazy, you right? Know what I'm so, mm -hmm. like, I think that's just, that made me kind of like how I am. Like, um, right. you just gotta, you gotta do it. You have to. You have to. Like, so one I day I was, um, I was in my apartment in Philly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Listen, I just finished smoking a J. We can go there, right? We're gonna be real. So, I was sitting there, I was real. sitting on my couch. And I was looking at my dogs and I noticed the, uh, you know, the gray coming in. And at that moment, I was like, holy fucking shit. It is just me paying all these bills, taking care of these three dogs. Like, it made me realize it's just me. Like, you ever have that moment where you're like, there's nobody else but you. So you got to make this shit click no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. Um, and then another time we were sitting in the, um, that's when COVID had just happened. And I went and got tested for COVID. And <clears throat> this is not to brag, but just to put this in perspective, right? Like I lived in Rittenhouse. So we're sitting in the hospital. I'm in a Beamer. There's a Mercedes. There's a Bentley. There's like a, you know, another Benz. And we're all sitting there waiting to see if we're going to die or not. Mm. And that put things in perspective to me, like Calvin, the Gucci Lopas, the Bima, the the house you got right here. That shit don't mean nothing. It can all be gone in a second because we're all sitting, because nobody knew nothing about COVID, right? right? We're all sitting there waiting to see if we're going to die or whatever. Yes, and at that time, you didn't have any interaction with the outside world. So it was just me and my dogs at the house. Right. Right. At that time, plenty of times I went to the hospital and left my car in the in the garage, it was like, oh, God, am I going to come back to it? You get what I'm saying? So it was like a very, it was a yeah. sobering experience because I left the car and left my dogs at home. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not even going to go back home, right? Right. And even right. they were like, ain't nothing wrong with your ass. This is stress. Go <laughs> take your ass home. <laughs> they sent you off. <laughs> <laughs> they got tired of you. <laughs> they got tired of me. But think about it. It was just me and Philly living with my dogs and Every time you get a scratchy throat, you're thinking you're about to fucking die. So, yeah, I don't know. Just, paranoid. paranoid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, paranoid. And then during that time, um, <clears throat> after that was over, I had an apartment fire. And one day I was just sitting home, like, you know, I was staying with a homeboy and I was going through like my LinkedIn and he hit me up and he was like, Oh, you did you know that um, our friend? He was like, did you know Lawrence passed away? And I'm like, no. So Cynthia, I don't deal, I don't deal with death. And when people get sick, I, I fucking take off, right? And they will call me, call me, and text me, and text me. Yeah. I'll be like, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Yeah. And then when I finally call them back, somebody else is on the end saying, oh no, they already, they already passed away. And even mm -hmm. if I didn't know they were sick, right? Like that's how it happened. So um, right. That happened with him. But lo and behold, before I left Philadelphia, um, the house I was staying at, the street was Lawrence and the intersection street was Catherine, like my mom name. And then when I moved to Houston, there's a Lawrence street by the restaurant I go to. Okay. And the, my neighbor, her name is Catherine. Wow. So it's just, uh, isn't that wild? That is wild. <laughs> oh, that is wild, oh. right? And so, um, but the last time I saw him, cause he's like, he was a good, very good friend. Um, <clears throat> he came by my house and I was, I was in DC mm. and this is before I started my company. And he was just sitting on the couch and he was just like solemn and, and you know, not himself. And I'm like, what the fuck wrong with you? And he was like, 
I mean, you know, you gonna go off and do great things. And I'm like, all right, motherfucker, I'm gonna see your ass. Right. Once I get back from South Carolina, mm -hmm. like, let's just catch up and go have dinner. But I ended up moving to another apartment in DC, right? Um, I moved to the war and I started my business and life, you know, life was life. And like, I didn't catch yeah. up with him. And then in 2019, I moved to Philly and I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm gonna call him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna call him because he's like, he's like you, like, you know, you go off in life, but you can always call that person when shit hit the fan and they walk you through some shit. Yeah, absolutely. And so when I went to call him, no answer. I went on his LinkedIn. It was just stripped bare. Couldn't find him on social media. And I'm like, what? This is odd. Right. I started switching around from him and everybody else was like, oh, I don't know where he's at. And then his homeboy was like, Calvin, I don't know if you know me or not, but, you know, Lawrence passed away. So, like, I look back over my life right. <clears throat> since I left home, like, in 2006. Mm -hmm. And most, like, the very key and critical, influential people that's been in my life, they've, they've gone. Like, they've passed away. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, you go through a phase and you look back for that person because you're like, let me just holler at them real quick because right. I need to yeah. ask them. They're yeah. gone, you know? So it's just wild. I don't know. It is well, but it's life. That's life. I think that's what I'm just realizing now that it is life. Yeah. Because I've been trying to hold on and like, yeah, you know, Absolutely. told each person through each phase, and because I wouldn't let go, God was like, yep, let me go yep. on this. That's them right away. <laughs> that's that's right away. Oh my <laughs> yeah. goodness. Oh yeah. Man. Mm, mm, mm. I, I mean, have that happened to you, or do you still like have everybody that you know? Honestly, I don't still have everybody, and I could be a big girl to, to to say that. You know, you know, sometimes you pray a prayer, pray a prayer, and it was just like God, whoever's not meant to be in my life, God, please remove them. We got to be careful okay. how we pray these prayers. You know what I'm saying? Because you yeah, know. Sure. But then yeah. it started being people falling off, and it could have been my fault as well. I can't just blame one person because you know it takes two. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, they started falling off. And I'm like, why this person, God? Why this person? You know, and I started getting frustrated. But it's just like, you don't know the answer. You don't have the answer. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just like, okay, you know. And then when I lost my brother, that took a toll on me. You know, when I lost my brother, and it was just like, all right, look now, why? And I hear people yeah. say, you can't question God. You're not supposed to question him. I should care. Why? Why you? Why him? Yeah, you know you can question God because He is God, and He know He go. He know you're gonna question Him, and that's how you get real. That's how you you. That's how you get real spit back from God. Like God, why this? Yeah, and He gonna communicate back with you on the level that you can accept it. You can ask. You can question God. You can ask Him anything. Yeah. That's why He the fuck God. You get what I'm saying? He's God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. If you can ask him for a million dollars, why you can't ask him, God, why my brother? And he's going to tell you why. Right. All right. All right. Ooh, child. I would say this, though. Not, this is not pertaining to your brother, but we have to be careful when we like, God, remove anything, right? That's hindering me. Absolutely. Because number one, some of the blessings that you asking for, God ain't gonna bless you with the same people around. Mm -hmm. Number two, God ain't really, and I, I say this a lot, right? You can't even heal in an environment that made you sick. So sometimes you have to go leave that environment, sift through some shit, and then go, sometime God will put you back there. And sometimes he might not even put you back there, right? Right. It wasn't Abraham when he made go to a new place, but um, you know, we read the Bible, but some of the things that happen in the Bible are literally happening to us yes. as we walk. Yes, and we absolutely. have this human experience of spiritual absolutely. beings, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to, I think that's what I'm starting to realize more so at this phase in life. Like, yeah. Calvin, it's not about you, it's about all the things that happened to you was in the will of God, and these things have to play out. Right, and right. Either you go smoke, fuck, drink your way through it, or you going hey God, let me just go on and pray this shit up. And then Yeah. Yeah. Everything everything I was afraid of, once I went through it, I was like, okay. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, I would say this. Whatever you're afraid of, that shit is true. Like, you will draw that to you. So always draw what you... The, the, the best outcome, right? Like, things right. are working out because... God, God, it just be like, oh, God, God, it. and it, it just worked yeah, out. Absolutely. I don't know. That's how, that's been my life. I, yeah. I God know. over everything. That's my thing. You know. Um, I'm a preacher. God over everything. <laughs> you say you know preacher. How I'm, you know, I'm preacher, How you know who you are? That is not no. Oh God, you heard him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 yo. Well, you know, we we gonna leave that for another time. We ain't even gonna get on that. <laughs> God, know, he know I'm like, you know, I'm over here with the with the people. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He know you are Calvin. He know you <laughs> are Calvin. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but he loves yeah. us. I'm glad he is not like man. He's not like people that sit and judge us and you know whatever point fingers and whatever life is gonna be like. Yeah, but see, I think that's so. My life has been. I, I'm gonna go there. A lot of people who've been around us, right? They judge us for whatever we've done, like of course, sexuality, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, partying, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have judged me and been, you know, they didn't talk that smack. But them the same motherfuckers doing that shit on the low. I think Absolutely. the thing was they're just mad, not mad. They just feel some kind of way that. It's not that I was out there being blatant and open with my stuff. I'm just, I'm going to be me. Right. All right. Absolutely. I'm going to do it and stand up in it, right? And then, right. you know, like I said, I think <clears throat> that's a whole other can of worms. But I think that's <laughs> the most part of it. And so right. when you get to people like us, we uh, it's not that. Sometimes I look, you're not afraid to go to the next part. And some of it might be depression, but there's a, a lot of motherfuckers that probably didn't say shit about you and probably planted a seed. But the thing is, I'll tell you this, Nipsey Hussle said this, never take advice from a motherfucker that you can't learn shit from. That's true. And then That's never true. take anything serious from somebody. A lot of these motherfuckers are on the sidelines and in the comments, you're actually on the playing field. Right. So always look at life like that. Absolutely. Like even at the football game, right? The fans are in the stand talking about, oh, he should have run this touchdown. Motherfucker, you in the stands. You're not <laughs> on the field. <female. laughs> you That's going back to the parking lot A and hopping in your minivan. That motherfucker gonna lose the game, still get in his whatever, get his salary, and go back to his penthouse. That's right. Right? So yeah. that's how I look at life. Yeah, which is so true. Somebody probably gonna eat me up with that, but hey, I mean that. It is you really already know in the comments. They're gonna, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> I know he just ain't say that. <laughs> but that that's true. Most people that give you comments, they on the sidelines giving you comments. They don't even know how to play the game, or they played the game so long ago that they're giving you advice from '82 and we're in 2024. <laughs> true. True. Like, nigga, that don't work no more. That matter of fact, they didn't computerize that part. Of, you get what I'm saying? Like, none of that work anymore, right? It may have the same foundation. The foundation is the same, but the approach is different. Absolutely. Because now we have different, you know, environments. There's a lot of different factors that goes into a lot of things, right? So Absolutely. I don't know. I always just say, do you? Yeah. So, I mean, whether you... Like, how are you getting all these new ideas? And th what is your plan of action to get them out into? Like, they're in the spiritual, but now you need to have them go into the physical. Like, what's the plan of action now? Oh, God. That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> no, all I do is just be me. And however God leads me to be, I just, I just be. I don't know. Do you think he's leading you and you're... A little frozen. Yeah, I, you know, one thing about me, I can't run. And, you know, for the people who really don't know me, but I can't run. And, you know, as many times I tried to run, it's like, uh, <laughs> where you going? <laughs> Stop playing with me. Like, okay, God, but 
All I say now, my, my favorite saying now is, God, your will be done, not mine. So That's whatever is meant to be, that. right? So whatever is meant to be, it will be. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it for me. Yep. And this is all I can do. And if I can make you smile at the end of the interview or the show, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get you to talk, I'm good. So, you know, it's 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 good. So I'm so glad. You, huh? What more do you think is um like how do you see let's talk about it getting because of where we're like now we're in this crazy ass climate, right? I'm all over the place, but you know what's going on with politics. Me and you are in the south, right? Like there's a right. lot of right. happening. Um, mm -hmm. like how do you where do you how are you reaching out to that and this is not your responsibility but i'm saying like if it comes to that because i think you can you can walk in these arena but being in the south what do you say to that young woman or that young guy they're in the course of starting a family and they're like can't do it you know what's going on with the abortion rights and all of that shit like how do you reach out to them how do you reach out to like where we were at you know young scared right we were playing it by ear right we didn't did uh -huh. everything from a to z right but right in us doing a to z and people judging that we were actually just living in our rites of passage so like how do you how do you speak out like how do you speak and and communicate with that with that Ooh, audience and right you was putting me on the spot um <laughs> I, my thing is, everybody has a choice. You understand what I'm right. saying? Yeah. And I know that sounds, I don't know, I don't want that to be a cliche, but everybody has a choice. You don't want to judge people because you don't know their situation. Um, mm -hmm. I I look at the news, honestly, but I don't. It was just a point of time where I stopped looking at the news because every time I look at the news, and y'all can call me a crybaby all y'all want to, I will cry because it's just yeah it's not like how it was back in the day where you seen a lady walking ducks across the street or whatever and, oh look at the lady with the ducks across the street or when an alligator came out whatever but now yeah. it's just different somebody's always missing somebody's always dying you got the abortion you know laws and everything else so i, I don't know i just say everybody has a choice and we shouldn't yeah. let the world <sighs> control us or, or whatever condemn us we just got to keep pushing so, I, I mean, I will look further into that, which I need to, you know, because that could be questions that can be asked in the future with different people, and I want to be prepared for that. But everybody has a choice is my, my answer. Yeah. I think you're already doing that. You don't think you're the woman with the ducks crossing the street with your show? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you're already like that woman with the ducks crossing the street? Don't you think you bring a different flavor with Let's Talk About It as happiness? It's like, from what I see... I think I do. I think I do. I really think I do. Um, and I love it. I, I really do. I love it. It's like every episode I have, everybody has been so... <sighs> I'm proud of everybody. It's just been great. You know, I get a little emotional, but I just love it because the 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 support, the realness of it, you know what I'm saying? You know, one time I had people say, oh, why is this person, you know, using those words? We got to be real. Oh, shit, because I've been you know, everybody, <laughs> And that's just you. And <laughs> it's the fact that, you know, you know who life you may touch with this, you know, with us talking and chatting, yeah. you know? So we just got to continue to be ourselves. The only judge is God. He's the only one I yeah, can. Yeah, I think that's the way. Yeah. I, you know? we, I would say this. We live in such a fucking fabricated world where it's the... I'll put it to you like this. I made a post on Instagram one time, many moons back. Mm -hmm. And it was me and my dogs. I'm sitting in the house. You know how I do. Just eating a fucking snack, right? <laughs> Somebody called me on the phone and was like, yo, Calvin, where you get that book from? And I'm like, what fucking book? The book on your coffee table. Motherfucker, you didn't zoom in on the picture. <laughs> Cynthia, I'm telling you, people are looking at shit you're not even paying attention to. We, uh -huh. I'm just posting, you know, you just posting a bottle of soda like on your on right. in your house. 
and people are literally paying attention to shit that you're not paying attention to. So a lot of times people are like, oh, like one time somebody was like, well, Calvin, you bougie. And I'm like, how the fuck so? Because. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think like that's, that's just the most outlandish thing I've ever heard, right? But I'm saying all that to say is a lot of this shit is fabricated and we got people committing suicide, going in debt, cheating on spouses, yes. not being their authentic self because they see somebody on Instagram, Facebook, and right. they're like, oh, I'm here on vacation and not knowing that right. person to their mortgage to go to that spot on vacation. Right. You pay your mortgage and stay the fuck home. And when you got money, go there. Because when you prioritize what you're supposed to be doing, God make room for the rest. Right. And I think people don't understand that. When you when you're trying to live up to this hype, it's just hype. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, these people are not fucking happy anyway. But I was one of them, right? Like spending a lot of money on shit that's useless, and you ain't really happy at the core. Like right. you weren't happy. Right. So Absolutely. I just think that like you're less talk about it, right? Like you mm-hmm. just add that level of there's still authenticity out there in the world. There's still authentic people. Right. It is. It really is. You know, so I, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's how I feel about it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, it's true. And I appreciate you. And I, we are definitely going to have to do a part two. Actually, we were supposed to be eating and talking, but I don't think they wanted to see us eat and talk at the same oh, time. Oh, listen, not, not with the crowns falling out. You know, I just glued this bad boy back in before I could get to the dentist. I tried to see all Crazy. that. I would have just came off camera and finished eating with the crown going, right? Like, if they would have just, you need a picture. So, if we do eat, just put it up there. I would just finish eating with the crown going. Just going really, yeah. Got you. It, it is what it is. We got this. Cal, uh, you are crazy. You crazy. But I appreciate I mean, it. I mean, this was a good catch up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was. It was. And we've been trying to do this for a while, but I guess life is life. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. It's life all is life. Good. So I think some takeaways, from, not to act like we're at work, right? But we're going to act like we're at work. Some takeaways <laughs> right, and action items. Let's get you. Let's get you connected to some care, right? So wraparound services for depression. You know, think about ways you can like introduce singing. Sing for a couple of minutes on your show. This is your platform. No, I will get there. I will get there. You're already there. (laughs) Where is this place you're trying to get? I'm looking for the sign. I don't even see like I will get there. You're already there. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're at is where it is. That's true. Always remember that. That's true. So So just just do it. I will. I'm telling you, I'm going to be in Atlanta because Invest Fest is August 23rd through the 24th. And that is going to be a big platform for you to go down there. And just watch, right? (laughs) No. (laughs) Hey, my name is Cynthia. You know, let me just go on the same. You're You're in the right area for it. Like, why do you think God have you there? Uh, You know, that's true. I never thought about it that way. That's true. Yeah, you are in Black Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It's a little busy, but it's okay. <laughs> Yo, I'm to show off because, first of all, Calvin, you are not interviewing me. We were interviewing <laughs> talking to each other. <laughs> this is supposed to be a chat. <laughs> it's a chat, but. Yeah, so look, guys. Thank you, Calvin, for coming through. I love this. You definitely have to do another session, you know, this is what I love. I love the real. I love the authenticity. If I said that right, Ugh. and we got to do it again. We got to do it I again. Know, next time, I think you gonna get all in my shit. But... <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> but I want to say thank you for taking the time out, you guys. Please tune in, and we'll talk soon. Peace. All right. Bye, Calvin. <laughs>